you know, I'll be talking about things that I've talked about before, uh, which is the uh, protein um, structures. And I'll be looking at the beta lactamase problem of uh, structure. And uh, not the full uh, folding problem, of course. I'll be focusing on certain, um, uh, on trying to figure out uh, the domains or the part of the structure which is important for function. And the nice, uh, well, uh, the nice, uh, I mean, I feel excited about it because, you know, it's, it's uh, just uh, looking at the data and trying to figure this out. Uh, one is not going into the lab to find out where the uh, um, proteins have uh, um, domains where they are, uh, um, you know, they are uh, uh, doing the function, but actually looking at the data and finding where the positions are in the, in the string of the protein. And uh, uh, from there, you see that there's a match with the experimental results. So I'll summarize my work. And uh, because I see so many new faces, um, I've uh, delivered a lot of this uh, here. And uh, but the last few slides will be for the, for the um, people who have seen this. Um, so uh, the title of my talk will be Network Analysis of the Protein Families. And I have uh, my collaborator, Pradeep, who is in Thailand, um, and Rakhi, who is with me at the moment in uh, Delhi University. So um, because I'm talking about proteins, and let me set the pace for biology from here. So uh, I'll, I'll be looking at proteins in, um, as a string of repeated units of amino acids. Amino acids are 20 in number. And uh, the order of the amino acids determines the protein. And um, uh, uh, the, this sequence of amino acids are important in determining the shape of the protein molecule. And that's, those shapes are important in its function. So um, I'll be uh, interested in the structure of this protein. And uh, of course, maybe in the future to relate it to the functions. But uh, the relation to the functions will be from already done experiments. So here, uh, so I'm be, I'll be looking in the context of protein at a particular family, uh, which is the beta-lactamase family. And these uh, beta-lactamase are proteins or enzymes, which is secreted by bacteria, okay, in the response to antibiotics like penicillin and these bacterial cephalosporins. And uh, what uh, these beta-lactamase uh, protein do is to deactivate penicillin Okay, uh, this is the beta lactam ring, and uh, and uh, uh, which gives the uh, makes the penicillin inactive. So um, we try to find out the uh, domains or uh, sectors in the protein uh, in the beta lactamase protein family, which uh, if or which we can control the um, or activate deactivate the action of this uh, protein. Okay, so. So that's the system, and uh, we, uh, but we look at it from the point of view of data, and we look uh, at the data bank, protein data bank, uh, which is given here, um, and it turns out it has 547 proteins, okay, uh, which are the beta lactamase family, which I've got from all over, and uh, one, one filters it and does all those nice things um, that is uh, there in, in, in um, in filtering this massive data, and uh, but uh, for the protein, what we have to uh, we have to do is the, this is this is the string of amino acids. We have to um, uh, bring the uh, the greatest number of similar characters ca uh, characters, which is the amino acids, into a column. Okay, into the same column. Okay, so that's how oh, that's called multiple sequence alignment, and uh, we do this. Uh, also, there are programs for all this. And uh, then we arrive at a, at a data matrix. Okay, so this is the data matrix, uh, which I call as D alpha. And alpha um, is uh, different properties, okay, of the amino acids. That means the amino acids uh, have properties, uh, hydrophobicity, um, uh, polarity, and volume, and so on and so forth. And so what we do to, uh, to the 
uh, MSN, okay, MSA here is instead of the uh, uh, instead of the amino acids, we uh, put in the numbers corresponding to their property. Okay, so this is the hydrophobicity data matrix, and this is the polarity data matrix, and this is the volume data matrix, and so on. Okay, and from here, uh, okay, so here I've just uh, made a, made the same um, um, uh, graph. I mean, same slide uh, for the data matrix. Okay, but it's colored. Okay, according to uh, the scaling. Okay, so the 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 red corresponds to high values of um, hydrophobicity, for example, and the the blue corresponds to the low values of hydrophobicity. Okay, so having the um, um, the data matrix, we can uh, do the correlation matrix, so the covariant matrix. Okay, which is uh, um, you know the, where d d are the columns. Okay, uh, uh, in the in the data matrix, um, and uh, sigma is the um, the standard deviation. Okay, and uh, the uh, um, the co and where the covariance is defined as usual, and uh, and uh, one is averaging over sequences. Okay, uh, this work I have reported here, and um, there's the, some work. That uh, is uh, published. Okay, so now what I would like to do is construct the network corresponding to this um, correlation matrix. Okay, so the uh, the network is defined by a graph G, which is uh, which has nodes. Okay, the nodes are the positions of the amino acids. Okay, and which are in that multiple sequence alignment, and the edges. Are uh, defined through uh, the the value of the correlation uh, element. Okay, if uh, there is uh, it is more than some value theta, which we call the threshold. Okay, or else it's zero. Okay. So these are the edges. Okay, so that's how we define a graph. So in a graph, there are three things. I need to know n the position, e the uh, edges. Okay, defined through this, and theta the threshold value. Okay. So the threshold value generates different networks, and uh, um, uh, with the same set of nodes and uh, different edges, but it gives you information, okay, about uh, the strength, the strength, yeah. And uh, so the connected components for different thresholds can be extracted, and uh, they are uh, important for structure and function. So here is the network. Okay, for uh, for the different prop, uh, different properties. Okay, this is the network, and it is for the threshold three. Okay, and you see that the blue, which I told you was, uh, um, uh, which was, uh, um, which was for the smaller values of the uh, of the hydrophobicity, for example, uh, they cluster together, and the red, which is the uh, the stronger hydrophobicity. Values they are clustering here at the edges, and that's a feature that you see throughout uh, the different properties. Okay, further, two moments. Okay, sorry. The um, yeah, I may need a little bit more time. Uh, so you see, there's no intermediate thing. There's okay. I'll just go through taking the different thresholds. Uh, there is no. There's always blue with blue, red with red. There's no. There are hardly any red with blue. Okay, so this is a very uh, unusual property for this uh, for uh, system for this system. Okay, so that's uh, this is the uh, network uh, which goes up to the the largest threshold, which tells you this is the strongest threshold. I mean, this is the strongest uh, interacting um, structure. So um, I'm focusing here on the hydrophobicity property um, in which uh, the thresholds are different. Okay, here are the thresholds uh, going from 0 0.75, 77, 0 0.85, and 1. And you see the structures change. Okay, this is hydrophobicity. And uh, it turns out that uh, 0 0.85 corresponds to a conserved domain, which you see in experiment. Okay? Uh, so these, uh, and then if you, and if you put them back into your uh, SHV uh, protein, okay, you see uh, at point 0 0.75, 
the the uh, structure of those uh, of those um, colors that were here. Okay, so this pink, pink, this white, red, and purple are exactly these. Okay, and you see that those points are uh, though they are far away in the uh, they're not very far away. They're connected in the network in the in the picture. When you go down and put it into the um, to this uh, protein, they are close together. Okay, so position. And these, uh, this we have found is uh, uh, these. Okay, for different thresholds, you get different um, uh, uh, values. Okay, and may I take a few more minutes? I'm almost finished. Yeah. So here uh, are the experimental uh, results, which coincides with this. Okay. And uh, these are the ongoing directions that we're trying to work on, which is the effect of mutation in proteins. And uh, I haven't to, uh, if someone asks, I can talk about that. And uh, we're also um, doing work on uh, increasing the, uh, we're looking at um, the multiplex networks. That means, uh, I mean, enhancing that, those results that we have to uh, creating multi-layer networks. And uh, uh, these are some results um, looking at similarity and so on. And uh, here are some results. And this is the conclusion. Okay, so this is the conclusion, and I'll stop here. Yeah. Do you have any questions from the audience? Sorry for the delay. something called alpha fold. Uh, there is a big program about uh, which predicts uh, structures of the proteins. Okay. I was wondering if uh, that has uh, that also produces networks, etc. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe there, there is. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of programs actually. Sure, this is very important. Major, the deep minds. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, actually, uh, they most probably. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely it's right. It's, it's it's a it's a problem which is for deep uh, learning. This this problem that we are trying to tackle, in particular in this particular way, is accessible. I think for uh, the deep uh, learning, pro uh, I mean, because actually we've done uh, work with other proteins also, so we get similar things. Okay, which has uh, connections to um, experiment, and uh, so uh, I don't know too much about uh, machine learning, but anyways, with so much data and so much. Um, regularity that can come out just by are doing very simple things. I'm sure the deep learning um, algorithms would be great in doing the prediction. Thank you. Any more questions we have from the audience? Okay, so let us thank the speaker.